RC from the Montauk Joiner Shop here. I'm about to embark on a new project. It's a walnut sideboard that I'm doing on commission, and I'm hoping to start cutting wood today. But before I do that, I would do well to recall the words of the great Chuck D, who once said, check yourself before you wreck yourself. So I'm gonna check these boards and make sure that they are in fact ready to be worked. And that's what this video is gonna be about. I'm gonna tell you why I'm doing that, and then I'm gonna show you how I go about doing that. So stick around. So you may be wondering why you need to even check your wood before you start cutting it. Like if you're used to working with plywood or MDF, you don't. Uh, one of the reasons those things are a thing is because they're relatively stable compared to something like solid wood. One of the reasons I prefer solid wood is uh, in part because it's of the furniture making tradition. I find it to be much more pretty. And of course, uh, the dust from solid wood I find a little bit less onerous and hazardous to my health. So uh, whereas I might use plywood for something like a cabinet back or a drawer bottom or maybe a door panel, depending upon the situation, I like solid wood. It has a much more kind of bespoke quality to it, if, uh, if you will. So why is solid wood more prone to movement than something like a plywood or an MDF? It's because solid wood is a living breathing material, quite literally. A simplistic way to think about it is uh, the wood structure is very much like a bundle of paper straws. And wherever you see pores in the surface of the wood or in the end grain, uh, you're seeing the ends, the open ends of those paper straws. And as such, the wood uh, acts a lot like a sponge in that it will take on and give off moisture readily. And when it takes on or gives off moisture, it's liable to expand or contract. And because of the inherent structure of solid wood, uh, it won't do so evenly. It's going to expand more across its width than it will through its thickness. And it's going to expand more across its thickness than it will along its length. Because of the growth rings in the wood, it is liable to cup or bow or warp, uh, depending upon how the growth rings travel through that given board. So with all that in mind, you might be wondering yourself, uh, how can you stop that? How can you stop the wood from moving? And the answer to that question is you can't. Wood moves. It's going to do it no matter what. I read something interesting in Christian Brexfort's book, With the Grain. Uh, he said that in granite quarries, one of the ways they extracted granite from the quarry is they had drill circular holes into the granite and then hammer a wooden dowel into those holes and then expose the ends of the wooden dowels to uh, water and it would soak up that water and expand enough to actually crack the granite. Uh, so you can't stop wood movement, but you can work with the wood. If your wood is at equilibrium moisture content with your shop, it's less liable to move when you cut it or mill it. So it follows from all of that that your next question would be, well, how do I check it to see if it's at equilibrium moisture content with my shop? Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is come over here to my tool chest and grab my moisture meter. I got right up here. And I'll show you which one it is. This one is the Ligno Scanner SD. This is a pinless moisture meter. There are two common types of moisture meters for wood. Uh, one has two pins on the end of it, and you basically have to jab those pins into the wood, and it sends a mild electrical signal from pin to pin, and via, I think what they call a bioelectrical impedance, it measures the moisture content of the wood. This one is a pinless moisture meter. As long as the surface of the wood is smooth, uh, it will send a signal via these two contacts, and I find that a little bit easier to use, a little more user-friendly. Uh, it may or may not be as accurate as the pin type, but it gets me close enough to know if I'm ready to work on the wood or not. And this comes in a nifty little carrying case with a little chart because it has different settings depending upon the type of wood that you're measuring the moisture content of. Another product that will make today's festivities possible is right above my shiny head here. It's this clock. This is an atomic clock from Lacrosse Technology. Uh, it receives a signal from NIST in Boulder, Colorado, which is right down the street from here. It stands for the National Institutes of Standard and Technology. And via like radioactive decay, the way they measure that is about as accurate as a clock can get. But that's not the reason that's gonna be helpful today. The reason it's helpful today is it also has the indoor temperature on it. 
and it also has the relative humidity of my shop on it. By the way, in the description for this video, I have affiliate links for both the uh, moisture meter and this particular clock. And if you were to purchase those products through Amazon via that link, a small portion of your purchase price will go to support this channel at no extra cost to you. So go ahead and check those links out if you're interested in these products. Over here at the other end of my shop, I have my filing cabinet. And I did a YouTube short about how into this filing cabinet I am, but in the top drawer here, I have a bunch of hanging files. And one of those hanging files is charts and references. And here I have this little chart. And this is the Equilibrium Moisture Content chart put out by Fine Woodworking. And I think I just did a Google image search to find this chart. And then I printed it out in full color and laminated it. And this is what I use to cross-reference with the other two tools that I just showed you. Now I've come back to my bench where I have my big piece of walnut that I would like to mill and cut to rough length. And if you'll recall, I talked about how this is a pinless scanner and as such it needs a smooth surface from which to draw its conclusions. So uh, this is a rough sawn walnut board and I need to clear off a spot uh, with a hand plane to take my reading from. So... Of course, it doesn't have to be pretty. As long as I'm finding a smooth spot. Going against the grain a little bit, but I think it'll still work. I have a pretty smooth spot right here. All right, so I have to reference the handy dandy chart that came with my moisture meter. So I'll go to set. It says for black walnut, it should be set to 60. So set, turn that up to 60. I'm going to set the depth. So I hit set twice and I can adjust it to go a quarter inch depth or three quarter inch depth because this is thicker stock. I believe this is five quarter walnut. I'm going to set it to three quarter inch depth. And then I'm going to hit the read button and just hold it on here and see what it tells me. And I'll move it around from place to place just to see if I get an even reading from place to place. On average, I'm right about well, it just turned off. So <laughs> I'm right about 6%. So this has 6% moisture content. Now, is that equilibrium moisture content with my shop? Let's find out. So according to my atomic clock over here, it is about uh, a little over 70 degrees, about 72 degrees. And the relative humidity is uh, at about 50% or just shy of that. So then I'm gonna grab my little chart that I showed you. And we'll find the relative humidity is about 50 and the ambient air temperature is about 70, and that is 9.2%. So I'm off by about 3% from what my wood is here, and that is a bit much. Not wanting to trust any one product uh, for my relative humidity for my shop and temperature, I also have this little guy. This is a Therm Pro, and I usually keep this thing in my uh, grow tent where I start seeds for my garden. So I know what the temperature is inside my grow tent and of course how humid it is in there. And I like to pull this out from time to time when I'm checking the equilibrium moisture content of my boards to see if it jives with what I have here on the wall. And what I have here on the wall is about 50%, and what I have on this is about 42. Historically, my shop has always been very dry, uh, closer to 35%. So I'm more inclined to believe this one than I am the clock on the wall. That said, when I look at my chart here, my relative humidity being closer to 40% at 70 degrees is still about 7.7% uh, equilibrium moisture content. So I'm still off by a couple of percentage points from what I have here and my walnut. If it was only about a percent difference, then I'd feel pretty comfortable with that. But given that this is about 3% different, I know that this wood needs to take on some moisture before I should start milling it. So what does this two or 3% difference mean in practical terms? Well, what it means is I could mill this by hand, I could cut it to rough length, I can run it through my thickness planer and end up with a pretty flat board. But because it's not yet at equilibrium moisture content with my shop, that board is much more liable to warp or cup or do something wonky that I don't want it to do that would require me to either mill the board again and end up with a thinner board thickness wise, I just have to do all that work over again. And I really don't want to have to do that. So it behooves me to wait it out, to be patient. You know, if you're a builder of fine furniture, uh, you should have Buddha-like patience by now. So I'm going to set this aside for a little bit longer. I'm going to go find something else to do. 
you know, something occurred to me while I was editing this video that there is in fact something I can do to help things along here. For one, I can cut these boards to rough length. What that will do is remove these uh, waxed ends of the boards, uh, the way they come from the lumber dealers, they wax the ends to slow down the transfer of moisture in and out of the board. And I wanna do the opposite. So I'm gonna cut these boards to rough length, leave about three centimeters or so extra length on each end of the board and expose some fresh end grain. And then I'm going to mill the boards just enough to get them flat, but not to the full thickness that I'm looking for for my project. I'm gonna leave a little extra thickness there uh, because the boards are liable to continue moving. But the end effect of all of that is to expose uh, extra end grain, expose the pores on the face grains a little more. And basically in the end, I'm gonna end up with smaller boards, which will reach equilibrium moisture content with my shop a little more quickly than they would if they were larger and thicker. So I'm gonna grab my crosscut saw, get to work, and uh, stack these boards up when I'm done to let them acclimate a little further. Normally I like to cross cut all my boards like that, but uh, those boards are big, they're thick, they're heavy, the saw wants to bind in the cut, and I have like a big track saw over here. So uh, and while I'm at it, let me show you a little tip for using a track saw to do cross cuts. One thing you'll notice is that your track, when you put the weight of the saw on it, is very stable. So one of the ways you can help that this track back on here. One of the ways you can help that is when you're entering the cut, keep the pressure on the base of the saw over your workpiece as you're entering it. And then as you're leaving the board, switch to the back of the base plate to keep the saw pressed against the top of the workpiece so it doesn't wanna tilt off the back as well. Once you've gotten the cut done, you can save your off cut, which is of course the same thickness as the boards that you're cross cutting, and put it underneath your track to help support and stabilize it. So I'm gonna stick it just underneath here so that, such that it's not sticking out into the cut line because I don't wanna tag that with the blade, but it does support the track much better. Now when I'm entering the cut, it's already being stabilized by that off cut that I saved from the previous cut. And as I get another off cut, I might stick it underneath the back end of the track as well to support that end of the cut. So a little trick for track saws there. Okay then, back to our montage. I still need to flatten the uh, longer boards for the project, but these short ones give you the idea. I uh, cut these to rough length, leaving a little bit of length on the ends. And then I flattened these by hand enough to run them through the thickness planer. And then I did that and got them flat-ish. And I've exposed all kinds of end grain and surface pores. And then I stacked the boards up on these things called stickers. These are just strips of plywood that allow the air to flow around all sides of the board. And hopefully this setup will 
allow these boards to come to equilibrium with my shop a little more quickly. And I'll just let them sit like this. I'll come out here and check them once in a while to see if their moisture content is what it needs to be. Once it is, I will flatten these again, uh, bring them to their final thickness, and then I'm off and running with my joinery. And when I come back in here to check it next time, hopefully it's within a percentage point or so of what my readings off of my clock and my little uh, temperature and moisture meter are here. And then I can get to work. And I'm very much looking forward to doing that and bringing you along for the ride. So I hope that was informative for you. If this is unfamiliar material, I hope it uh, made sense. I'm gonna leave an affiliate link for this little guy as well. And then of course, check out the other two if you wanna pick up this scanner or that wall clock. Also, if you've been getting a lot out of my videos, you've been enjoying the content or learning a lot from it or whatnot, you're welcome to click the link below the video called Super Thanks and leave me a tip or buy me a burrito or whatever you want to call it. Uh, to this point, this YouTube video making venture is a losing proposition from a business perspective. Any little bit of uh, assistance you're uh, willing and able to provide is very much appreciated. Thank you in advance if you're going to be doing that. Thank you in retrospect uh, if you've already done that. So that's a little super thanks icon below the video. And in the meantime, uh, enjoy working in your shop and I'll uh, see you in the next video. Now, if you like what you saw here, please hit like and subscribe. It would help me out a lot. Also hit the little bell icon if you want to be notified anytime I release a new video. And if you didn't like what you saw here, keep it to yourself, pal. Or watch one of my other videos. You might like one of those. Thank you for watching.